Okay, hi Virgos, welcome back to my channel. Guys, if you are new here, welcome. And if you are returning, thanks so much for supporting the channel. So we're going to go ahead and do a general message. Now I am doing a message for what I like to call my white witches, okay? You may resonate more with being called a healer or an indigo child or um, whatever, right? But I'm going to be using white witches. Now it is a general message, so it may not resonate with everybody. Just take what resonates for you and leave the rest. Anybody interested in a personal reading, my information is always down below. Thanks to those who do reach out for those. And thanks to those who donate to the channel. And to those of you who do subscribe. It's very much appreciated. Now, this is not going to be a reading for anyone who participates in any kind of low vibrational dark magic. Okay? This is not going to resonate for anyone who may be out there and they are hurting people on purpose or projecting things to them out of envy or out of a low vibrational energy, okay? So, Spirit, what do we have for my white witches? What's the energy here? What do we have for my healers? Because just because, you know, Virgos, you may be out there healing and helping people, that doesn't mean that you have learned everything that you need to know, right? You will still also be on a learning journey. But it gives that energy of each one teach one. So what do we have, Spirit? What's the message here for my white witches? Give me a card for now and a card for going forward. Thank you. Yeah. Bottom of the deck, we have High Priestess, leadership. So some of you will definitely be in some sort of leadership role, okay? This is also giving the energy where a lot of you are very intuitive with the High Priestess energy. Very much connected. Number 14 could be significant or the number 41, but it does boil down to a five. Now, that is giving me instantly that for some of my healers, you may have found that throughout life, life has been a battle, right? You couldn't get to this position without it, unfortunately. Now, I am also hearing that phrase, like, you may feel like all your life you've had to fight. But it's so that you could sit in this position. And I'm hearing spirit saying, relax. So for some of you, that energy may have already subsided or you may find that it does um, going forward. But again, you know, it's always that energy where you have to kind of say to yourself, you know, the fight is never really ever over. The first card I'm seeing here, it says bathe in the river. It says self-care. So this is saying to me that for some of my white witches you need to kind of like do some sort of spiritual bath okay keeping your energy pure and cleansed here now some of you you know if you have the opportunity to get to a a river or something like that a beach you know maybe the natural sea water would be very good for you as well some of you may do things like stargazing and things like that Maybe you are like astrologies, um, astrologers as well. Maybe you keep up with that side of things. I know spirit has definitely been on my rear end <laughs> to kind of get into that. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. you know. Going forward, you have crossing the veil and it says morning. And it's a number 37, okay which could be significant, we also have 36 and 63 or 37 and 73. But this crossing the veil is a number 10. It boils down to it. And it, again, it tells me about, which is what I was kind of getting here, right? Where some of you, you may find that your gifts are heightening here. You could be entering like a, a new cycle of your gifts. But this is also giving me where some of you, you may have like Scorpio or something in your chart. Where it really just keeps giving me this energy where I don't know if you feel like on a daily basis, like um, every new day you feel like refreshed or energized. Crossing the veil. 
but it's also giving that high priestess energy, right? Some of you may do like some sort of mirror magic, but it's giving me like that energy of like the high priestess where um, you're able to see through things, see through people. Maybe you, some of you read energy very well. Some of you just get heavy downloads and, and signs and synchronicities from the most high. And, and it's like you are able to recognize those signs and synchronicities very easily. Hmm. Just make sure you're keeping up with your protection, right? I see salt here with boundaries. But again, any kind of ritual or spell work that you do, I feel like it is really aimed towards you and your life, like protection spells, like manifestation spells. Yeah, and then you have you have this knowing card and it says take the first step. So this is also saying to me that I have some healers out here or white witches, right? Where you have these gifts, but you keep them to yourselves. And I don't know if you fear... Um, how people will take you or you, I don't know if you fear that people will turn around and say you crazy God gave you these gifts for a reason mm. some of you may be going for initiation as well but spirit give me a message for my white witches what is it that you want them to know what is bathing in the river yeah, I'm telling you, something here is about to change, shift with this Wheel of Fortune. But some of you need to put fear behind you. I feel like that Seven of, so seven of Swords is, um, even though it's called the Seven of Air in this deck, the Seven of Swords, I feel like this is an energy of you almost like deceiving yourself. Some of you may also keep finding excuses or delaying something that has to do or is related to your gifts or your purpose. But show me more. What do we have for my white witches, spirit? What is bathing in the river? Just give me three cards. Can I get two more cards? What is bathing in the river spirit? Can I get one more? Thank you. Some of you, you, I'm seeing the seven of cups at the bottom of the deck. And some of you may be like in this kind of space where you kind of think to yourself, you know what, is this real or is this an illusion? Am I confused? You know, I don't know if you are in that kind of an energy where you just feel like, um, I don't know, it just feels like procrastination. Some of you may even need to do a little bit more research on certain things. Yeah, I'm hearing that uh, Mystic Meg voice again. It's written in the stars. So the first card that is coming out for you is coming out sideways. It's a three of air and any card that comes out sideways for me is a blockage and the three of air it talks about sadness and pain and i don't know if some of you are holding on to something that you need to release it says take time to heal it says the need to forgive yourself and others so again going back to that energy of you know virgos it's all very well you know you going out there and putting the energy in to help people to heal people to make sure that you know people are on the right path or they're just happy or even to uplift their spirits that takes energy from you but what how much of that energy are you pouring into you what are you still heartbroken about what is it that you haven't healed from You also have the five of water coming out here. And the five of water talks about someone who is in that energy maybe of crying over spilt milk. This could be things in your life that maybe didn't turn out the way you'd wanted it to. Or the way you'd hoped. So this would be that energy of people disappointing you, lying on you, cheating on you, stealing from you. 
And sometimes it hurts because sometimes it's the closest people to you or what is meant to be the closest people to you. This talks about the way I'm seeing it here with the Ten of Cups coming out. There's a turnaround. Mm -hmm. This could have been family members that disappointed you. You know, ch children, if you have older children. Friends that you grew up with. Lovers that you invested in. But the Ten of Cups talks about emotional fulfillment, happiness, feeling contented. Cleanse these energies from the past away. It's bringing me to the daily affirmation card that came out today. So let me just grab it real quick. Now the daily affirmation card today talks about the present. And it says the future doesn't exist. It says the past is gone. It says I focus on the present. I am once again confident in life. It says, when my soul is ready, good things happen. So I feel like this 10 of water talks about, I guess, raising your vibration. Now, some of you could say, my vibration is already high. Okay, then, well, then I may not be talking to you. But it is very difficult to be... Um, high vibrational all the time. Because at the end of the day, whether you class yourself as a healer or like I said, uh, um, a, a white witch or whatever, you know, you're still human. But the Ten of Cups, it says a contented and rewarding family life. It says your emotional and material needs are met. It says trustworthy relationships. So let's read a little bit about the three of air. The three of air. So the three of air says something has occurred that makes you sad. This may be a current situation or something from your past that has lingered and continues to distress you. Trust that the sadness will pass and you'll eventually see the situation's purpose in your life. Take time to heal. Release painful memories and move bravely forward. Forgiveness is a powerful healer. Don't hold on to the energy of past disappointments or conflict. Remember to forgive yourself for choices you might wish you'd made differently. You did the best you could at the time. And allow yourself to move on. So again, that energy of releasing, okay? So let's see what the Five of Cups says. It says many... It says, things may not have turned out the way you'd expected. Be careful not to focus too much on the negative, as there's a positive in every situation. You may miss the silver lining. Fighting or trying to ignore changes that don't serve you. Instead, have faith that everything happens for a reason. It's healthy to grieve what you've been lost. And it says, take time to heal. Reach out to friends, family, and wise counsellors for support and comfort. So maybe that's why the Ten of Cups is out here. And then the Ten of Cups says, You have a content and rewarding family life. And there's great harmony among those around you. Your relationships are strong and trustworthy. You feel blessed and loved. It says your needs, both material and emotional, are met. Your relationships with family and friends are genuine. Peace, joy and unconditional love surround you. 
So you do have people around you that love you, okay? Genuinely love you. But I feel like with these two cards up here, I just feel like for some of you, it feels like, like I said, there, there may be something you're holding on to or you're not releasing. Uh, again, maybe you need to clear some sort of energy around you here. You know, there's things that you can do um, to lift your vibrations if you're not feeling like 100%, you know, and I'm hearing definitely crystals and things like that. But show me what crossing the veil is. What is crossing the veil with mourning? Now, there's another energy that I'm getting off here. Yeah, I just got goosebumps, so I think I'm onto something. <laughs> now, there's something else as I'm staring at this card, right? Crossing the veil. For some of you, you see there's two figures here. Now, we can only see one person in the mirror. Your ancestors and your angels are always there. Now, I don't know if this sadness is about maybe someone that you lost, someone that you miss. For some of you, when somebody passed over, whatever grief or sadness you went through, it helped to catapult you onto your divine path. Now, I know that may sound that has a downside to it, right? Because we don't ever really want to lose anybody that we really love and care for. But that is how the world works, okay? How many of you have ever noticed that sometimes when someone leaves this world, maybe from your family or loved one or friend, how many of you notice that right behind it there is someone that turns around and says, hey, I'm pregnant, or they literally give birth to a child? It's a cycle of life. But what I'm trying to say here is for some of you, you see this shadow figure. Some of you may feel like there's someone always around or you just, maybe you know they're around. Maybe you talk to them as if they're still there, like myself, <laughs> you know? But you are being protected and you're never alone. That can also be a very draining energy when you are a healer and like I said, you're helping this person, you're doing that for this person. It can be exhausting. Never alone. What is this crossing the veil for my Virgos? And man, do I take these? <laughs> do I take them? I'm not going to put it back. Virgo. You have the hermit. This is the energy of, to me, the wise, the knowledgeable. But it can, again, where I was just talking about, you are never alone. The hermit is very much, uh, uh, you know, uh, someone who spends a lot of time on their own. Maybe in meditation. It's just hermit mode. This is an energy of self-discovery. This is an energy of you being a spiritual teacher. Some of you may even be whistleblowers, tarot readers. I'm looking at his cane that he has, like the walking stick. And it reminds me of a, a verse in a song. And I, I feel, I think I have one of the cards, I've written out one of the cards, um, one of these cards as it. But it's a saying where in the song he kind of says there's a lot of snakes around and we need a walker. And so again, like I said, that can talk to me about being a whistleblower. That can talk to me, yes, about being a psychic and being able to see through, you know, conniving people, see through lies. And that is how you also can go forward and help people here, right? By helping them to open their eyes. Number nine, definitely a message from my Virgos. Now, what is exciting here, Virgos, is you have the dreamer. And look at the number on the card, it's a zero. It's really making me feel like for some of my Virgos going forward, there's, yes, I still get this energy of your gifts being heightened and things like that. 
But I also get the energy here where for some of you, if you put certain fears behind you, like when I was saying earlier, I feel like some of you have gifts and you're not using them. You're not presenting them to the world. And it could be because you're afraid of what other people may have to say, how other people will see you, how other people will receive you. That shouldn't be your worry. The dreamer is that energy of you can manifest anything that you want. It feels very magical. It feels like an energy of creating miracles. Yes, it all sounds very fairy tale. But if you believe. It says a leap of faith. It says follow your dreams. It says unexpected opportunities. And, and <laughs> interesting. Look at the unexpected opportunities. You got the Ace of Fire and the Ace of Air, which is the Ace of Swords. So this in itself is victory and success. This is about following your passion, your desires. This is about victory. This is about you having excellent ideas, ideas that you feel like, nah, I can't achieve that. But why did Spirit give me that vision? Because they want you to follow it. This is also someone here having the gift of the gab with this ace of swords, clear communication, clear and direct. Now, some of you, I'm getting this energy here as well, where you may have started something, but I don't know if you gave up. Because you, you came um, face to face with one hurdle or you had people trying to bully you or whatever, right? Trying to push you out of something and maybe you gave up. This is not a time for giving up. I'm hearing spirits say this is a time for attracting, achieving, receiving. Mm. So someone here, maybe you write or maybe you do poetry or something like that. But this is an energy where spirit says, hey, listen, when it comes to some sort of uh, career or creativity or like I said your gifts this is a time to change your life but it's almost like they're showing me the line you got to face this with strength mm -hmm. you got to face this with confidence what's the advice for Virgos going forward Deep bonds. Keep a close connection with your ancestors and your angels and the most high here. Hmm. Because there will be attacks along the way. Yeah. Some of you may have animals. Build a stronger relationship with them as you can. Because your familiars may be what is also helping to protect you. It's that energy where it's almost like they're showing me dots. Where everything is connected. What's the advice for Virgos going forward? Hmm. You got dance. So again, this energy of keeping your vibrations high. These women are dancing around a fire. But they're doing the dance of freedom. A free spirit. This is about embracing your uniqueness. I had this, I wasn't going to say I had this conversation. <laughs> I said this the other day in one of the readings where, you know, how, how, how good it is to be different from everyone else. Why would you want to be all the same? Why do you want to do what everyone else is doing? It almost makes me want to say, don't you want to be a part of the 144,000? They're singing that song. I heard that song for a long time. When the saints go marching in. I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. And look at that. As I'm singing the song on the bottom of the deck, you've got sacred vows. Say your daily affirmation. One more. Midnight moth distractions. Be careful of distractions. Be careful of temptation. Be careful of things and people that will get you off your path. Because being in a high vibrational energy, yes, it's like the divine feminine. It's like the divine masculine. And the divine feminine, divine masculine, 
empress, emperor, they attract. They don't chase. But that doesn't always mean that you're going to attract good things, good people. And this is why with this ace of um, swords out here as well, it's important to use your discernment. But on the day we have Book of Spells, it says learn. Maybe some of you need to get into some sort of spell work or, you know, like I said, all above board. But manifestations for you. Yeah, I'm saying all above board, nothing to do with no low vibrational spells here. All right, we're not talking about black magic. We're not talking about voodoo, hoodoo, okay? Spirit, at this time... Is there anything that my white witches need to be aware of? Anything that they need to be aware of? You have the number eight. It says grumpy red fairy. It says be your true self. Give me one more for this grumpy red fairy. What are we getting stuck on? Tempting offer has a high price. Fly trap. Yeah, I, I feel like this goes back to this midnight moth and this distraction energy. Sometimes offers may sound good, like I said, with the energy of temptation, right? Things may sound good, they may look good. But just as the Most High is always at work, Right, when he sends out the angels and ancestors to work with you, it's the same as the devil's always at work. Especially if you get into a place where you're actually following your dreams and not just following them, but manifesting them and they're coming true. Especially if it's that energy where we go back to you being in some sort of leadership role. Self-care, loving on you, loving on others and spreading that energy of love everywhere. Of course the devil's going to come after you. In some way, shape or form. <laughs> hmm. Give me one card. Be your true self. No? Okay. So give me a everyday witch card for my white witches. They just said, and wizards. So I must have a masculine in here. Forgive me, sir. <laughs> All right, give me one card for my Virgos. Thank you. Yeah, what is this energy of sadness and things like that? It makes me... <laughs> that silly little saying, turn that frown upside down. You have tears of joy and sadness. So I don't know if some of you, you feel like you flutter between energies. So let's see what it says. Tears of joy and sadness. What's at the bottom of the deck? Affirmation for acceptance. Time for you lot to get on your little magic broom here. See all these ravens here? Messages. But it's giving heavy psychic energy. Maybe someone here needs to take a gamble in something when it comes to this situation. Fate. Show me more. Inspiration and courage. I don't know, that's all with a crystal ball. I hope I'm giving someone some inspiration and courage today. What's fears of joy and sadness? Thank you, Spirit. Mm. So definitely 99 could be significant. So it says, life is rarely simple. There is no such thing as completely good or bad. 
Even the best outcomes may come with a price. And even the worst disasters can often have a silver lining. Loss and grief show us the value of what we had and how lucky we were to have it. The toughest challenges give us the opportunity to rise above. That doesn't mean that the hard stuff isn't hard. Of course it is. But if you can find the positive side of even the worst events, it will help you stay strong and keep moving forward. Maybe maybe you can even inspire others who are dealing with their own difficulties to keep moving forward too. So, the divination, it says, this card may be an indication that you are struggling with tough times. Or perhaps you are coming out of the other side. Maybe both. Either way, stay strong and smile. Even, why do I keep saying even? Stay strong and smile when you can. Oh, it says even here. Even if it is through your tears. If the card doesn't represent you, perhaps it is a reminder that even those who present a happy face to the world may be hiding tears underneath. Be kind and give people the benefit of the doubt. You never know what they are dealing with behind closed doors. Mm, but I feel like for some other words, I feel like this is you. Well, I've already covered this. It's time for someone here to plant new seeds. Yeah, affirmations for positive change. You also have accept love. Affirmations for growth. So I feel like affirmations are good here. I'm also seeing, how do you say that? Is it like a, um, okay, thank you, a vision board. Some of you, a vision board may be good as well. Anything else that my white witches need to know? Thank you, spirit. Anything else? So coming out, you have <laughs> the high priestess again, <laughs> high priestess, high priest. It says responsibility. You have a responsibility to use your God given gifts. And look at the ace of swords again. Some of you may need to put up boundaries with certain people. You have the alchemist, you have tarot cards and guidance. You have rituals, candle magic, clearance. Maybe some of you need, like I've been saying, maybe some of you need to do some sort of clearing out spell or energy cleansing spell. Now give me three cards so I can end this reading. For my white witches and wizards. Thank you, spirit. <laughs> Three cards going forward. So you have dream work. And it's a number 21, okay? Which for me, it boils down to a number three. 21 could be significant or 12. I heard someone's birthday is on the 12th. But it boils down to a number three. And the three of ones for me talks about being able to see the bigger picture. It talks about planning. It talks about progression. It talks about moving forward. I'm hearing don't limit yourself. Two more. Dream work. You have explore. She has that lantern, but you see how that raven is there again? Guidance, leading you, signs. And I'm not even going to lie. I look at this woman's face and she does look a little bit scared, right? But who isn't scared of the unknown? But see, I'm hearing that. <laughs> I don't know why I'm hearing it. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Again, it could be an energy of a transformation going on for someone as well here. Releasing negativity. That energy where we just read the card and, you know, it's that energy of seeing the glass half full rather than half empty, changing your mindset, your perspective. 
It's that energy of trusting. Yeah, it's like I'm hearing trusting that God got your back. He got you. Your ancestors, they got you. Your angels, they got you. One more. How do you want to end this reading? The Virgo. Hmm. I don't want that one. Thank you. Some of you may need to watch your alcohol intake or... But give me one more. I love if it came out. <laughs> okay, it didn't. <laughs> so, you have decisions. And this is a number 17, which could be significant, or 71. But again, it boils down to an 8. And the 8 of Wands talks about moving forward. But you have to decide. It talks about moving forward, but and once you move forward, the eight of wands talks about things picking up speed, gaining momentum, lots of things happening at once. Things change. But again, spirit will give you the guidance, but you have free will. So Virgos, that is the energy that I've picked up here today. Okay, I do hope that something has resonated with you guys. If it has, I do ask that you hit the thumbs up for me. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. But if this is where we part, guys, stay safe. Love and light, Virgo.